Dr. Doreen Grand is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grand Dr. Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. Okay, so uh, somebody has written in on Facebook and said, what are the major differences with developmental delays due to extreme prematurity mm -hmm. versus autism? Oh. My son has been diagnosed with different agencies, regional center, insurance, developmental, uh, insurance, developmental doctor, school district, and the diagnosis are not even similar. So obviously her son was born premature and somebody's diagnosed autism. What, what's the difference? Yeah. Isn't that annoying mm -hmm. uh, when you're just trying to seek a, a, a clarification on what's going on with your child? So the way that I look at the diagnosis of autism, and perhaps that's because I've been in the field for the 40 years, so you see a lot of change in the classification of the diagnosis. You know, when I first started in the field back in the 70s, it was we had a whole different series of things we were looking for. Like one of the symptoms of autism back then, and I think it, it was either the second or the third diagnostic manual, was something like uh, the child has, doesn't, is insensitive to pain. I mean, like things that we don't even look at anymore right now. So there were, so the, when the diagnostic criteria, when the symptoms change all that often, like they've changed four times in the period of time I've been involved, um, it tells you that the symptoms are not diagnostic, they're, they're descriptive. So they're not, if, if your child has these symptoms, he must have autism. It's more like most kids with autism have these symptoms. So I wouldn't be too focused on the diagnosis. I always tell parents, the diagnosis is useful because you will get funding. That, that is the only use of the diagnosis. All children on the spectrum have a different set of symptoms. Some, there are some uh, commonalities, but one child will have one symptom that another child won't have, and they both will be under the umbrella of ASD. So what I uh, really suggest, and, and to answer your question more specifically, yes, there will be some similarities from premature babies who will have uh, certain types of behaviors that are very similar to autism. The way that the diagnosis of autism works, though, is that you have to have specific, a specific number of symptoms within certain areas. So in the social communication area, you need to have X number of symptoms. In the repetitive behaviors, you need to have X number of symptoms. So it becomes really important that you sort of uh, you know, fit that criteria. But yeah, they could be very similar. With a premature baby, you probably have some of the symptoms, not necessarily all that will lead to a specific diagnosis of autism. For example, you might have two symptoms where three are required, that kind of thing. But having said all that, don't even worry about it. If you have a diagnosis of autism, get your funding and get your intervention, get your ABA going. Because, and if you have a, a, a diagnosis of just prematurity or a developmental delay or something like that, try to get help. You will have less access to funding with, without a diagnosis of autism just because your situation will be less severe. But having said that, get ABA because it's all about teaching those skills. It, it doesn't matter what, as I've always said, Shannon, the way you look at autism or any other, any other disorder, it's like we're looking at ADHD this way, we're looking at global delay, developmental delay, uh, intellectual delay, any kind of delay. What you do is you list all the things that are like delayed in contrast to peers and all the things that are excessive in contrast to peers and you balance them. You teach the child using ABA techniques how to do less of these things, for example, less screaming, less tantruming, less aggression, and less self stimulatory behavior, and more of these things, for example, more social, more conversation, more language, more play, etc. And you try to bring the child within what we classify as kind of the normal realm of all behaviors for that age, and that's it, and that is your goal. So, Whatever the diagnosis, your goal should be to increase functional behaviors and decrease challenging behaviors, and, and that's it. 
Yeah. I think as parents, we get all hung up on the diagnosis, right? Yes. And it's like the thing that we hang everything on. But I'm here to tell you that the diagnosis shouldn't define our child or their progress or where we expect them right. to be. What, it, what as parents, what's useful is, is if we take the diagnosis to define where we're going to go to get funding to help our child get what they need. Exactly. And that's it. And then everything else, you just sort of shove into a back closet and you go, not dealing with that um, because it, it's like all the stuff that's not useful to you. Right. If it gets, if having the diagnosis gets you the therapy that you need to help your child to be able to do the things that they want to do it's like that's enough right right but everybody else will try to bring their you know well, what's the diagnosis I, don't you find i mean i have many friends unfortunately that are going through cancer right now and everybody wants to know well what oh. stage what you know and and they will all say that's not helpful or useful to me right now this is what i'm doing for treatment i wish as an autism community we would gather around that too because the same thing no, no no okay your level whatever I don't care. Yeah. Let's treat let's yeah. treat you. You're an individual. You're here and you need to learn some skills to cope and you need to learn some skills so that you don't have to throw a tantrum. Let's just do that. That's right. That's let's exactly just do that. Right. And not worry about everybody else's mishigas, as my friend right. says. Honestly. Right? Like yeah. just move that to the back of the bus. Hey, thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.